All right, guys. Hey, uh, boy, I should have had my tea in place. Um, hey, again, happy Tuesday, January 14th. Today is day two um, of our epic uh, meta metabolic detoxification diet. Um, and I'm Dr. Jason Bradley, the uh, founder of Epic Functional Medicine Center and the creator and developer of the Epic 5 plan, uh, which is what this entire detox is based on. Um, you know, just to kind of, you know, fill in if you're not familiar with the Epic 5 plan uh, and this detoxification diet, um, the Epic 5 plan was developed uh, basically for myself to help me dig out of my own kind of, you know, health pit that I was in. Um, I literally lost everything, including my practice um, in 2004 due to health reasons. Um, I lost my family. Um, I had to piece everything back together. Uh, and it took me about three years to figure things out. And this foundational diet is the nearly the exact diet that I use to restore my own health. Um, and then after, you know, since 2007, you know, tweaking and tightening um, here and there along the way, this is the diet, uh, the foundational diet anyway, that I've used um, to help, you know, thousands of people from all around the world, you know, reclaim their health, their happiness and their life. And I'm so happy in 2020 to be sharing it with such a large group. Um, this is the largest group detox I've ever led. I've led smaller groups. Uh, in pockets of, you know, a few dozens. Um, I think the largest one we ever had was about 40 people. Um, but I think we have 330 people doing this detox with us right now, which is awesome. Um, I'm hoping that in 2021, uh, by the end of this year, uh, we have a few thousand people. So um, if you guys are enjoying this, please let people know. Our goal is to get information uh, to the public. Our goal is to help um, everybody that's suffering know that there's a message of hope, there's a message, message of health, um, there is a solution. And again, this is the foundational diet that I've used um, for myself. Just to kind of talk about, you know, what we uh, uh, went over yesterday. Yesterday, we laid down the foundational, um, kind of the basics of the diet, you know, what is the diet? It's a whole foods diet. Um, uh, this is not a product uh, that you have to take. This is not a, you know, some kind of sales pitch. Uh, where I, you know, I'm going to be pitching you some, you know, great detoxification drink and, you know, liver cleansing agent and, um, you know, some kind of supplement or a medicine um, where, you know, you need to buy this thing to get healthy. Uh, the reality is, guys, uh, the majority of your health is going to be found um, just by implementing um, the five components of the Epic Five, this being one of them. Um, those five components are very clearly, you know, keep yourself hydrated, eat the right foods, uh, move manage your stress and have a good sleep wake pattern. And that's it. Um, it's, it's that simple. I promise you guys that if you get control of those five elements, uh, those five pillars of health, your health will improve. I don't even know um, your specific health concerns. Some of you guys I do because I, I know some of the people on this call, um, but nonetheless, and I love you all, um, but nonetheless, no matter where your health is, if you just follow the basic plan, um, your health will improve. And of course, my caveat is if you have, you know, dietary questions, you know, um, is this appropriate for my health condition? I, of course, can't answer that on this type of call, uh, but I will tell you the bigger answer is probably. Um, in fact, um, we've seen everybody from uh, executives that just want to make sure that you know, their health is, you know, they feel like their health is solid, but they want to be on the top of their game, and they absolutely don't, you know, don't want any you know, hiccups along the way, and we check their health out and make sure they're doing well. And we also see people, people on the other end of the spectrum where sometimes I'm throwing a Hail Mary pass um, either from a patient um, or a referral from, you know, Mayo, Mount Sinai, uh, you know, Cleveland Clinic, where people aren't given even long to live. And it's my job to try to figure out what can we do. And I would say that I use this foundational diet with just about everybody in between. Um, one of the big differences that we do with Epic, with our, with our private clients, um, we do run food sensitivity tests, metabolic studies. I mean, we, we do dig into their internal chemistry and personalize this for each specific person. Um, they all work with a health coach. Uh, so again, um, it is personalized as far as that goes, but this is the foundational diet. This is the jumping off point. And again, um, that second pillar of the Epic Five was, you know, what to eat. And here it is, guys, again, for review from yesterday. It is vegetables. How many vegetables? A lot of vegetables. What kind of vegetables? Green vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, and uh, colored vegetables that at this point um, in your training um, would be non-nightshades. Um, however, kind of in the deeper aspects of uh, the Epic Five plan and in this diet, we do talk about ways to eat nightshades, and we actually have a whole section coming up here on lectins. Um, I believe it's on Thursday. It might be tomorrow. I don't have my schedule right in front of me, um, where we're going to be talking about lectins and what to do about them and what the heck are lectins and do I need to worry about them? And if I do, what should I do? And I'll be covering that later. Um, but, you know, colored vegetables that are non-nightshades. Um, let's see, um, healthy fats, healthy proteins, berries uh, primarily is the sweet, and then an acid um, with every meal and even throughout the day, lemon juice, lime juice, apple cider vinegar. Um, 
It can be in your cooking. Um, you can add some lemon juice to the water that you're drinking, but nonetheless, acid to stimulate digestion. And again, with, with hydration and water being on the foundation. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys, um, just for a little housekeeping here before we get going, um, we've had a lot of questions about, uh, and it's come out, the Epic Five curriculum. You know, what the heck is that? Uh, and the Epic Five plan curriculum is uh, a curriculum that we put together on teachable.com. Um, it's set up in modules. Um, you know, we have a hydration. We, well, today we're going to be talking about the introductory module a little bit, which is the big why. And I'm going to jump into that here, uh, hopefully within a minute or two. Um, but we have a module on the big why. But then we have a module on each one of the Epic Five, you know, hydration, um, you know, what to eat, you know, how to move, how to st manage stress, you know, how to create good sleep patterns. And then we have some other modules as well. Um, you guys are welcome to that. And I'll put the link, um, I'm going to be posting this video into the plan. I'll put the link into the text. Um, you guys are welcome to, uh, you know, purchase that if you want. But I want to emphasize that you do not need to purchase that curriculum. Um, the, I'm covering everything that you need to know and more probably. Uh, my, my clients know that I'm very long-winded and they put up with it. Uh, and hopefully it's valuable. Um, but I'm going to be covering everything that you need to know and more um, just with these daily videos and then with the posts um, throughout the week. So again, um, I know you, a lot of you guys, you know, I can't get access to Teachable. I can't get access to Teachable. Our private clients have access to that. Um, and otherwise, uh, there is a, a small fee for it. Um, but it's, it's minuscule compared to the content that's in there. And we're always growing that content, pushing that content, and sharing as much as we can with you guys uh, to empower you guys. In fact, EPIC stands for EPIC, stands for Empowering the Person to Impact the Community. Our job um, as doctors, uh, we take it from its Latin root, docere, which means one who teaches. And our job is to teach you guys how to be empowered, to be in control of your own health, your happiness, your life, and your future. So again, um, that's my job, and that's my job today. Um, let's see. As far as other housekeeping things go, um, we are recording this, as always. Um, it will be posted to our, our YouTube channel. Um, if you're not subscribed there, please do. We post videos just about every day at this point. Um, and so certainly subscribe to that. And uh, as far as the Q&A version of this goes, having done a number of webinars before and workshop, online workshops before, um, with this type of format, what seems to work best is if you open up your chat box um, with, with this video, um, there's a little area to type your message in. Uh, you can either type a public message, um, a public question, and I'll, I'm going to answer it. Um, you can, uh, yesterday, a couple people sent me private questions, and that's fine if you don't want your name attached to it. They just come right to me. Nobody sees it at all. Your chats are not recorded. It's just the video of me talking that is recorded. Um, but nonetheless, um, feel free to send any questions that you have along the way in real time. I will answer them in real time, probably after finishing my sentence. Sometimes not. Sometimes I'll just jump right to your question. Um, also, uh, yesterday, uh, during yesterday's call, I had a couple of private messages came through, that came through asking how to become a client. Um, and I, first of all, I'm very honored and that's awesome. I, my goal is to help as many people as possible. And um, we make it pretty simple. Um, we, uh, everybody that's on this call um, is qualified for a free introductory consultation. Um, it's literally no strings attached. Uh, the only thing that you need to do is just schedule with our nurse clinician slash enrollment coordinator, who is my uh, very beautiful on the inside and outside and, and amazingly better half in every way, um, Rachel Bradley. And um, she'll jump on a call with you, chat about your condition, uh, you know, see if it's a good fit. Um, if she feels like it's a good fit for us and we can help, um, she'll connect us uh, for that free consultation. If for some reason she feels like it's not a good fit, her job at that call is to just make sure that you get connected with the right person. Um, and I know that even on this call, uh, we have you know uh, at least one or two other healthcare providers that I think would be really great choices. Um, so again, we'll always try to connect you with the person that we think is the right for you and for your needs and for your goals. And so again, I'll post that and I'm only housekeeping that um, only because we had some private stuff coming in yesterday. So again, um, easy peasy there. Uh, so we're gonna jump right in. Um, and again, I hope everybody enjoyed their first day. Uh, we had a wonky day yesterday. I gotta tell you, um, nothing like starting out, you know, a detox, you know, here we are yesterday, day 13 of the year. Um, we always start off with a detox with the doc mid January. Um, we repeat something like this. It's usually a little bit different each time. Um, but we repeat a detox in April, also in July, also in October. If you follow that, it's the beginning of each quarter of the year. And the reason that we do that is because um, we found that no matter what our, 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 
commitment is, I don't know how else to say that, and we're going to talk about commitment today. No matter what our commitment is, it seems like, you know, we do really well for a while, some people longer than others, and then we kind of veer off our plan, even though we know it's helping, even though we know that we're feeling better. And then, of course, symptoms start coming back and, oh my gosh, I forgot that I used to feel this way or have these aches and pains or brain fogs or migraines, you know, or fatigue or, you know, I was losing weight and now I'm not or I'm gaining weight. And it's because we veered off that plan that was working. And what we found, you know, after two decades of working with clients, uh, again, from all around the world, is that when we just have a very simple thing to return to, like this detox, um, we get to hit that reset button. So we planned this mid-January on purpose um, to help all of us kind of, you know, stick with that momentum of our New Year's resolutions um, and kind of carry it into February. Um, and then, you know, uh, what do we do after 21 days? Uh, we have a day 22, day 22 and beyond. I'll be covering a little bit of that um, toward the end of this detox period. Um, not this week, but um, toward the end of that 21 days. So um, all that said, we started yesterday and uh, my entire family, with the exception of me, um, despite my scratchy voice, uh, woke up with something. I don't know if it's the flu. I don't know if it's just uh, you know, a bacterial infection. I don't know if it's just a common cold and sniffles. Um, but it took my uh, uh, wonderful better half out. It took my older daughter out. Uh, my younger daughter uh, is doing okay, kind of like me. Uh, we're like two peas in a pod as far as our bodies go. Um, and, you know... Uh, Nothing like starting out with, hey, we're sick and we need to detox. And I always say, what a better time to do it, right? So um, I don't know if you looked at my post yesterday, but I ended up making everybody um, some, some chicken soup, some chicken broth soup with some vegetables. I think somebody called it chicken vegetable soup. I think that's a great word for it. Um, but I made sure to get all the components of um, the Epic 5 uh, Metabolic Detox in there for you guys. I posted my recipe online. I'll be doing that every single evening. Um, you know, I wish I had time to do it at lunch as well. Um, but I'm going to do that every single evening so you guys can see what we're eating, um, you know, at, at the doctor's house. Uh, and if you want to just follow along, you know, the next day and follow the recipe, you're welcome to. I will tell you my recipes are super simple. Um, I am not a cook. I am not a chef. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, sorry, I had a message come in. Um, and I'm so, I'm so distracted. I've got like ADD or something that, yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> uh, that, you know, there all the little blips and, and blings on my computer, you know, catch my attention. But, um, you know, I, I got the, the I got the, uh, the vegetables in and the cruciferous vegetables and the colored vegetables, the greens. Um, I got the healthy fats in, I got the healthy protein in. Um, we didn't put berries in there, uh, but I did get cilantro and parsley. And, uh, uh, and if you want to learn a little bit more about cilantro, I was going to say palantro, cilantro and parsley, um, watch Rachel's video on how to make that smoothie. Um, she did a great job, but we got cilantro and parsley in. And then I added the acids in also a little apple cider vinegar to my, um, to my soup. And then I added some, you know, my spices consisted of a total of salt, pepper, uh, garlic. And then I added a little turmeric. Um, nobody could taste it. Um, but, uh, certainly gave it kind of a, a, a yellow tint to it. Um, I actually didn't get to eat it until very late last night, and I hate eating late. I think it was 10.30 when I finally had dinner. Um, I, am, I do not advocate that, but um, actually, like I said, we had a wonky day besides um, me attending to my family being sick. Um, uh, we had a lot of work that we did yesterday, um, and then my, uh, my younger daughter had some medical needs. Um, those of you that are my clients have been following along with that, and I had to attend to that, and it, and it just ate up my day. Um, so at about eight o'clock at night, um, seven o'clock at night, I was uh, texting Rachel and my older daughter, Adeline, you know, saying, Hey, how was that soup? And they said it was good. And I said, was it good, good, or was it good? And they said it was good, good. Um, and I will say that I think it was the second best soup, um, chicken soup that I've ever made. Um, my favorite one is the exact same recipe, but I add in, um, I think some cumin, um, and, uh, uh, a little bit of spice there. Um, and, uh, to give it kind of a Southwestern flavor and it was awesome. I mean, it was just awesome. Um, so nonetheless, follow that recipe if you want. And if you have recipes, I'll be posting my recipes every day. Uh, again, just like I did last night in the Epic five plan community feed. Um, but if you have uh, recipes that you want to share by all means, post your pictures and post the recipes. That's the way we all learn. And I love that. Uh, and thank you guys for doing that because God knows I need all the help in the kitchen, um, that I can. And I'll tell you what. Uh, I am the, I am the cook. I'm the master cook in our house. Um, uh, Rachel is awesome at so many things. Um, but I will say that I did not marry a domestic goddess. Um, and she did not marry a domestic God. Uh, we struggle, we struggle with basic things like eating and cooking, just like everybody else. Uh, so 
again, um, I'd love to hear your feedback and comments on that. And I'd love to see what you guys are eating so that we can expand our repertoire. Um, and again, uh, I love that, uh, that you guys do that. So that said, uh, I'm going to jump right into the big why. Uh, today, I want to discuss why we're doing this, but not, not in some kind of like low, low end way. I really want to dive in and share with you guys, you know, not only my personal why, but also help you guys develop your whys. And what I'm going to ask, um, and I'm, I'm going to post mine too, but I'm going to ask you guys to be courageous enough to post your big why. Why are you participating in this group detox? Uh, and I, I really would love to see a lot of posts on the, on the Facebook page. Um, the reason I, uh, there's a lot of reasoning behind this, but what we found is when we externalize, when we make public our intentions, uh, when we make, when we kind of are, we allow ourselves to be vulnerable and transparent, um, again, semi-publicly, again, it's a controlled group, it's a private group, so we're all in this together. Um, but when we do that, we start to manifest um, that intention into creation. Um, and I guess another way to say that is we basically become more compliant um, with our goals, right? Um, the more people that you tell about your goals, I'm going to come back to that in a minute, but the more people you tell about your goals, it's been shown over and over and over again in the literature, um, the more likely you are to achieve those goals. Um, I also want to say that the reason I keep telling everyone to invite their friends, their family, definitely who is ever living with you at the house, um, you know, but church mates, coworkers, um, associates, colleagues, anybody that you would want to do this with you, you should be inviting them because in addition to being transparent and vulnerable um, for compliance, what we found is when you put a team together, which is what this group is, uh, which is often, which is awesome, but when you put a, your own personal tribe or team together and you're all doing the same thing and you're all kind of feeding off of each other, every pun intended, uh, with the metabolic detoxification diet, that's as funny as I get. Um, but when you guys are feeding off of each other, um, it, it's kind of a momentum, a group momentum or a herd momentum um, that propels you forward so that when one of you is struggling, and I promise you in that tribe that you put together of those people that we talked about, um, when, when, you are, when somebody's struggling, if it's you or someone else, what happens is the tribe will come in and, and help carry that person through. And we know that. So it's always important um, to surround yourself with people that are going to be supportive, for people that are going to do this with you, uh, for people that believe in this project with you and for you, and that want to see nothing more than your success. Again, I'm going to put a pin in that and come back to that and talk about crabs, as promised, uh, in, my, in my Facebook feed. Um, I'm going to talk about crabs later and the way that works in the crab world. So the big why. Um, it's, if, usually when I ask people, you know, when we, when we have people coming in, um, saying like, hey, uh, you know, why, why do you want to be my patient? You know, a lot of people have been struggling for a really long time. You know, we have people that have been coming in, you know, with decades of suffering, you know, and fill in the blank, you know, um, I can't lose weight. I have brain fog. I'm moody. Um, I can't sleep. I have no libido. My hormones are out of whack. Um, my GI is out of whack. Uh, you know, I'm in pain. I'm migrating pain. Uh, you know, all, all of these, you know, symptoms. Uh, I'm sure I did a very poor list there, but I think that you guys get the idea. Um, we see fairly chronically ill people um, with what we call multifactorial symptoms. It's not just like one thing. People don't come to me, I have high cholesterol, I want my cholesterol to be lower. Um, you know, people come in because they don't know what else to do, and it's my job to figure out what to do. So I always say, you know, why do you want to get better? And the, the kind of the off the cuff answer for everybody is, uh, I want to be healthy, right? Who doesn't want to be healthy, right? I don't. There are very few people that I've ever met. In fact, I don't know if I've ever met anybody um, that would say, I don't want to be healthy and I just want to keep suffering. Um, I mean, that's, people just generally don't say that. Uh, little, little side note to that. There is a certain type of victim mentality and sometimes part of the unwinding with health is helping people realize that they can be bigger than the box that they put themselves in as that suffering victim. Um, and that there is a world outside of that box. Sometimes being in that box, even though it sucks, um, at least we know what that, sorry, I said sucks. Um, I'm, my, my clients know I'm a sailor at heart. Um, and if, and I'll always, I'll always be a sailor. And uh, if you follow me online, um, you know that I've learned to edit myself over the last few years. Um, and I put asterisks in where um, uh, some words might be, but uh, uh, nonetheless, um, it stinks to be in that box. Um, but sometimes knowing what's in that box is less scary than all of the potential that's out here. 
Um, you know, some people have identified as suffering for so long that they don't know what it's like not to suffer anymore. And that become become a very scary thing. You know, it's, it, it becomes that, you know, I can't do this because I'm suffering. And when all of a sudden they can do things, then it, it opens up that possibility. Like, what if I, what if I can do it and I try and then I fail? And so there's a fear of failure. And again, if you uh, follow my feed and our, on our YouTube channel, um, I did a whole video on the fear of failure, the fear of success, um, and the fear of, of basically uh, uh, judgment. So um, again, we'll, we'll come back to that at some point if we need to. But nonetheless, I'm trying to get out of the box. You know, why do you want to be healthy? Um, and, it's, and it's bigger than, or why do you want to get better? It's, better? it's bigger than just wanting to be healthy. I always follow up with the question, why do you want to be healthy? You know, and it's, it's interesting after doing this for a couple of decades, you know, people step back and they say, I haven't really thought about that before, or they get really quiet and they really start to think. And it's, it's as a doctor, it's interesting to watch them think about why they want to be healthy. And typically it's interesting. Usually almost always the first thing that comes out of women's, uh, my, my female clients, and I think it's 83.7% of my clients are female. We run stats on everything. Um, I'm pretty close to that number. Um, most of my female clients will say, uh, I want to be healthy because I feel like I'm letting my family down. There's that feel of fear of judgment again, right? I feel like I'm letting my family down. I can't participate in family events. Um, I can't be there for my kids or my spouse in the way that they want and need me. And I want to be there for them. And I think that's a great why. Um, for most of my male clients, um, they say things like, you know, um, I don't feel, they don't use the word productive, but you know, uh, what they mean is I don't feel as productive um, as I can be. Um, you know, I feel like I, I should be able to, uh, you know, go out and go running. I should be able to, um, you know, I can only get about four or five hours of good work in a day. Um, and then I'm kind of, you know, fading off with brain fog and fatigue um, for the whole afternoon uh, after lunch uh, between when I get done with lunch until I leave. And man, if I could just be productive at the end of my day, I could be, you know, earning more money or getting a promotion. And I think as a man, there's still some societal pressures and some stereotypes and, you know, all, all that stuff. I know that, you know, we're a two income household. Um, you know, both Rachel and I work, uh, it seems like two full-time jobs each, but it's just one job each. Um, but, uh, you know, we work all the time. Um, but I still think there's this weird thing about um, females feeling like they need to be there for the family and um, men feeling like uh, they need to earn money. Um, and the reality is for most of us, um, yeah, for most of us, it's just very difficult um, to kind of get out of those stereotypes. And uh, as, as was just mentioned to me, um, sometimes it's just hard to say, we just want to be the best that we can. And I think that's a great post um, that, that was just shared with me uh, in the chat. Um, and what I always turn that around is, um, and I really mean this, uh, we are faith-based people. Um, I'm not here to proselytize or invite you to my church, um, but we do believe people are brought to us for a reason. Um, we do believe that you're on this call for a reason. You're watching this video for a reason. Um, and, you know, our job is to serve whatever that big reason is. Um, some people call it God. Some people call it the universe. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of words that we can use there. Uh, but nonetheless, I do believe that there's no coincidences that we're here for a reason together. Um, my job is to serve that big reason and give you guys value um, and direction. And so what I say is, I, I just want each one of my private clients and everybody on this call too, um, to be the brightest lights on this planet that they can be, whatever that means, however that plays out. Um, and if we're suffering with, you know, these chronic symptoms and these chronic illnesses and beating ourselves up about it or feeling, you know, um, that we don't, um, you know, look good uh, and we don't feel good and we, you know, you know, we start to have self-confidence issues and we start to shrink, that flower just starts to, you know, uh, wither a little bit. And I just want everyone to be the brightest light, to be the best that they can on this planet, because I know, in my opinion, um, we're kind of in a dark time on the planet right now. I keep thinking it's going to turn around, but, you know, uh, I'm not going to hold my breath today. Um, but, you know, we're on a dark time on this planet. We need all the brightest lights that we can be. So if we can all live to our best selves, whatever that is, whatever, however that plays out, doesn't matter if you have a job um, or don't have a job, you know, um, being a, being a stay at home parent, um, as an example, believe me, is a full-time job. I totally get it. I don't know how stay-at-home parents do it. Um, I mean, I, th I think it sounds, it sounds exhausting. Um, you know, and I love my kids and I'd spend every second with them that I could. Um, but nonetheless, uh, 
you know, I, whatever that means um, to be the brightest light. And that's what I want. So coming back to the big why, I, I want you guys, I'm going to give you guys an assignment and it's, I'm going to give you like a, it's the same assignment, but done a few different ways. I want you guys to write out your big why. I want, and I'm going to share mine here in a minute, but I want you guys to write out why you want and deserve to be the best you that you can be. Why you want and deserve to be the healthiest, the happiest, um, most independent, brightest light on this planet that you can be. What would that world look like? What would your world work, look like? What would those around you, how would that affect people around you? Um, you know, what would that do for your life? If, if I had a magic wand, um, which, which I do right here, uh, I went to Universal Studios uh, and got this wand. This is Professor uh, Lupin's uh, wand from Harry Potter world. Um, I keep it there as a last ditch effort. Um, and that's a joke. Um, I keep it there as a last ditch effort, but if nothing else works, I'll pull out my wand and wave it. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, do something and, and hope it works. Um, hopefully we're doing a lot more applied science than that. But nonetheless, if I had a magic wand and I could wave it in your life, what would that life look like? And I want you to know that ultimately that's your why. That is your why. My why, I'm going to tell you guys a story. Um, I told you guys I almost lost everything to my health. Um, and I haven't shared this part of my story. I know that a lot of you guys have heard my, you know, waking up feeling tired and barely getting through my day and not being a dad and um, doing the best that I could. But man, it was, it was barely scrapping by. Um, but um, it all started months before um, that story starts. And I haven't shared this publicly very often. Um, and my clients know that once in a while, I still have to deal with this. Um, but I'm going to share a story with you guys. Um, and it's an intimate story and not a lot of people know, uh, know this story. In fact, I don't know if I've ever said it publicly, uh, maybe like I said, individually to a few people, uh, and hinted at it here and there. So back in, um, uh, it might've been late 2003 or early, it was early 2004. Uh, I flew down to San Antonio for a cardiology conference. I'm not a cardiologist, um, but I study all of the ologies. Uh, in fact, one of my mentors um, Dr. Tom Culleton, who I credit a lot of my uh, doctoring, maybe not my my understanding and skill set to, but my my reasoning for doctoring, um, I credit to Dr. Tom Culleton, um, Canadian doctor that also happens to be down in Texas now. He's in Austin. Um, but Tom told me uh, one day, he said that our job as functional medicine doctors is to be the best ologist of all the ologies, meaning that to be a true doctor, we need to understand everything about physiology and about chemistry and genetics and endocrinology, neurology, cardiology, gastroenterology. I mean, you can fill in all the ologies there, right? Um, and so I spend my time and I've spent the majority of my career um, you know, uh, with strange bedfellows, um, so to speak, going to all the different ology conferences. And, and like I said, early, early 2004, um, I was flying down to a cardiology conference. Now, before I went down there, I had started, um, I had been having these wicked debilitating migraines. Um, that I would never tell anybody to do this, but I was just popping Excedrin, um, you know, in the like wake up in the morning, pop as much Excedrin as I thought my body needed, um, you know, which is acetaminophen, aspirin, and caffeine, um, taking it like it's like it's Tic Tac candy, um, repeating throughout the day. I knew that if I took it too late in the day, um, I wouldn't be able to sleep because of the caffeine buildup in my system. I'm sensitive to caffeine. Um, so uh, this is like my 2002, 2003 years um, dealing with these migraines. I um, uh, would, you know, switch over to just Tylenol. Uh, by the way, in my opinion, in the literature, um, Tylenol is one of those deadly uh, uh, medicines on the planet. Um, the reason I say that is that it shuts down, um, it literally shuts down uh, something called cytochrome P450 in the liver, um, which is a main detoxification pathway. And um, that's why, uh, you know, you're not supposed to drink without, with Tylenol, um, you know, acetaminophen and, and, and alcohol is like a, a, a recipe for you know, um, accidental death. I mean, be very careful with that stuff. But nonetheless, I was taking it like it was crazy. And then to get to bed at night, I would take Tylenol PM because um, it would knock me out. And it was, it was a horrible way to live. Of course, I woke up feeling groggy, um, not only because I was suffering, I didn't know it at the time, but with an autoimmune disease um, and uh, some, other, some other issues, actually multiple auto, autoimmune diseases hadn't been diagnosed yet. Um, but I would wake up also feeling groggy from the medicine. But I fly down to this cardiology conference and I'm not feeling good. I was supposed to get to, um, again, San Antonio. The plane got grounded for one reason or another 
in Austin. So I made it to Austin. Um, I think I missed my plane or something. I don't remember what happened. Actually, it wasn't grounded, but I missed my plane. Um, I got there very late. The conference started at 7 a.m. or check-in was 7, 7.30 in the morning. Um, there was no flight out. So I rented a car. Um, I drove, it's not too far uh, to, um, to San Antonio from Austin, but I just drove middle of the night, migraine city. I knew I couldn't take the caffeine. Um, the Tylenol wasn't cutting it itself. And um, boy, I'll tell you what, I was suffering, but I got there. I power slept from about, I don't know, four or 5 a.m. until about 6, 6.30 a.m. Um, I was staying at the hotel where the conference was. Um, I woke up, went down to the conference and checked in, sat down next to some people I didn't know um, and, and was just trying to make it through the conference. And uh, lunch rolled around and I had, you know, I had my phone. Um, I needed something, I needed some help. Um, and I thought I was just gonna go to this little urgent care clinic. Down in San Antonio, they have these walk-in clinics called the NICS, NIX hospital system or the NICS, kind of like um, these urgent care centers and then attached to a hospital, but it's called the NICS centers. And um, I turned to the guy next to me that I didn't know. And I said, as a joke, hey, I don't feel good. And he said, yeah, you don't look good, man. And I said, yeah, I, I don't feel good. And I'm gonna go just get checked out real fast over lunch. And these were my famous last words. Um, I said, if I don't make it back uh, from lunch, please tell my wife and kids that I loved them, right? And I was totally joking. Um, and uh, sometimes I get emotional when I tell the story, um, but this is my why, this is my why. I, uh, sorry. I checked into NICS and, um, you know, it's urgent care. And I finally got in to see, see the, I think it was a nurse at the time, she took my blood pressure and I was at stroke city. Um, my blood pressure was way over 200. I think it was, I'm, I might have these numbers wrong. And of course, over the years, as we tell stories, the numbers go up, but I believe it was like almost 220 and almost, uh, 170, 175, like right in there. It was really bad. I'd never had high blood pressure in my life. Um, clearly, I think in retrospect, that's what was causing the migraines. Um, I think that I was having some issues, but of course, being the good doctor that I am, um, I put myself last to put my patients first. Um, again, barely getting through my day um, because of X, Y, and Z, you know, trying to take care of my patients, trying to take care of my, care of my family, um, trying to put food on the table, pay the mortgage, pay my student loans. I mean, all that stuff. Um, I would get to the doctor tomorrow or next week, and I just never did. But anyway, I'm at Stroke City. And um, they immediately took me out of that urgent care walk-in and triaged me into the hospital. Um, and they did uh, every possible test known to man. Um, what I mean by that is I had EKGs, echoes. Um, they were doing Doppler studies. They did a brain MRI. Um, I found out incidentally um, that I have something called Sella Tursica syndrome, uh, where my pituitary gland is smaller than it should be um, and probably doesn't regulate my thyroid well, um, which is probably, you know, coincidental or at least incidental or at least um, somehow correlative to my thyroid issues that I used to suffer from. Um, but nonetheless, uh, they couldn't find anything. Um, but while they were doing that MRI, uh, I, you know, and I don't know if you've ever had an MRI before, but you're, you know, you're in this machine and um, I don't know if this sound will, will translate well, but, you know, they always ask you a really funny story or funny question, which is, hey, what kind of music do you like? Uh, and you know, I'd never had an MRI before. So I'm like, I don't know, whatever you want to put on. And I think they said is, is, you know, I think they made a joke like, well, we've got both kinds here, country and Western, you know, big Texas joke. And, um, so I said, yeah, whatever's playing is fine. And, um, they put me in an MRI and it was, it was like a tomb. I can't explain it. It's like a coffin, right? So they slide me into this coffin and all I hear is, you know, it's just knock, 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 knock. I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but, um, just a really loud knocking. Yeah. Um, a really loud knocking. And I know, yeah, I, 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 I send people in for MRIs all the time. I know some of my clients um, have recently gotten MRIs even. But, um, uh, you know, it's a really loud knocking. You can't hear anything. Now they have these more open MRIs that are, that are a little bit not so, you know, claustrophobic inducing. Um, but nonetheless, I'm in there and I, I feel like I'm in my coffin. And I've been told that I'm at stroke level. I've been told that, you know, this is very serious and it, they need to figure out what's going on. They need to pull it down and that it's, it's literally serious enough that uh, they were trying to coordinate with my family um, who was back in Iowa. And uh, I remember laying there, I remember laying there saying, I mean, praying to, to make it through that, to make it through it. And I remember bargaining with God I'm sure, I don't know if you've ever done this before, 
but um, it's weird to bargain with God. It's weird to like be, be sitting what you think is at death's door. And um, I've unfortunately faced it a number of times for different reasons. Um, uh, those are for a different day. Um, I live a, I live a, I will live a wild life. I'm just teasing. It just seems like I do, but nonetheless, I'm bargaining with God. And I tell God, you can't have given me all of this knowledge and information and wisdom to help people. You can't have given that to me. And right at the start of my career, have me die. You can't have had me bring these children into this world and not be able to be the model for them that, you, that they deserve. And if you just let me live, if you just let me live, I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to service. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I'll drink my tea because I'm British and keep a stiff upper lip. Uh, there we go. Um, sorry about that. I relive that moment sometimes. And I lived. I made it. I didn't die. And the reason I choose to do this detox and the reason I choose to stay on the detox and to eat as healthy as I can and to move and to keep myself hydrated and to keep, try to keep my stress down, even though we live in America and we're all you know, underpaid and overworked and, and underslept and overtaxed and everything else. Um, the reason that you know, I try to have good sleep patterns and, keep, and protect my sleep and protect my health isn't for me. What motivates me and my big why is my family. I love my family. I know we all love our families and I think everybody would say this, but man, I love my family, faith, family, and then everything else, right? I would do anything for them. And I love you guys. You, you guys are probably uh, third on that list, right? My clients uh, and my followers. And I want to live in that service because that's, that's the deal. That was the deal I made. I turned my health around. Um, I actually left practice. I, did, I took some mental space, um, went back and taught at the university for a couple of years, um, almost two and a half years. Um, I love teaching, by the way. I didn't, I didn't realize I'd never been an instructor before at a university before, uh, level before. I loved it. Um, sometimes I dream of going back and doing it. Uh, and uh, I was even looking at volunteer uh, teaching the other day. Uh, I don't know if I want to get paid to do it because I, I want to have some liberties with what we do. But um, nonetheless, um, it's probably why I do so much education. It's probably why I create an online curriculum. It's probably why I written the book um, coming out in the spring, um, Epic Five Plan. Um, it's, it's why I'm, I wake up in the morning and make my tea and I serve my clients. I serve my family, um, sadly, in that order. Uh, what I mean by that is my family sleeps a little bit later than I do. So I get up and answer the questions you know, by 7.30 in the morning, um, you know, wake my family up, get them tea, um, serve you guys all day, serve them all day. Um, you know, serve my friends, serve, you know, serve that higher power because that's my why. That's my why. And what I want you guys to do is to dig and find out what your why is. What's your motivating factor? Why do you want to be healthy? What does that life look like to you? I want you guys to write it down. I, I mean, I really want you guys to post it in the group. I'll post mine. You guys already heard it, uh, but I'll post mine. Um, I want you guys to be transparent. I want you guys to be vulnerable. And I want you guys to be public because you're going to get momentum from it. I promise you guys, it's going to light a fire that you didn't even know could be lit. And that's going to be so powerful for each one of you. And then I also want you to print it off on some paper. And this is what I highly recommend. And my clients already know this. Post it in your bathroom, like right on your mirror, first thing that you see in the morning. Post it by your bedside, so it's the last thing you see at night. Post it in your car, so while you're driving, oh yeah, you don't have to read it, you can read it, um, but just seeing it will help you remember it. Post it at your workstation, right? Uh, I'm so sorry, guys, I, I was getting buzzed. Um, sorry about that. Um, I want you to post that, let me turn that off. Uh, I want you to post it everywhere, so that you can have a constant reminder of why you're doing what you're doing, why you deserve it, why the world deserves it, um, and what that means, not only in your life, but in the impact 
impact of others' lives. And what I really recommend, because I know a lot of, uh, we're talking about food right now, you know, and food is one of those things, um, like I always, I, I always tell everybody, it's the easiest thing to change because you have full control over it and it's the hardest thing to change, you know? Um, but all it takes is a reprogramming to say, yeah, I might want that cupcake. I know it's, I know it's somebody's birthday at the office and they brought in a bunch of cupcakes. We don't allow that at our office because we only allow healthy snacks. Um, but you know, here's the cupcake day again. And you know, tomorrow's going to be a birthday cake. And the next day the boss brings in donuts. And I mean, um, the next day, Hey, you know what you guys did so well, uh, with your sales that, you know, everybody gets Pete's party. Um, or we're going to, um, you know, have the, have the bar buffet and everybody, you know, Friday night, Friday after work, you know, we're all going to go down there and, and, you know, get sloppy drunk. Um, I, I get it. I get what society's like guys, but you know, and it's not like I don't, I don't drink. So that was an easy one for me, but it's, I, I, I love cupcakes, man. I don't like ice cream, but I love cupcakes and cakes and cookies and muffins. And, and man, I, I love that. I love carby stuff as an example, but I don't eat it. Um, and the reason I don't eat it when I want it, when I want it, I actually say the words out loud. My family is more important than that, than that Twinkie. I don't know if it's a Twinkie. Um, do they even make Twinkies anymore? I don't know. But I actually say, I actually say those words out loud. I don't want that because of my family. I'm not going to eat that because of my family. Um, I'm not going to eat that because of my purpose. You know, I'm not going to, I'm just not going to. And it takes years of conditioning to, to get from where we are in society uh, to get to really living true to that big why and what I call, you know, in alignment with that philosophy and everyone's going to have their own personal philosophy and their own personal whys. Um, but I, I promise you guys going public with it, being transparent, um, being vulnerable is going to help posting it around is going to help. And I, I, I would really recommend this read it first thing in the morning, like just read it, read it. If you're struggling with food, read it before you eat or before you're making food choices, keep it in your pocket read it at the end of the day. Sometimes I even say, don't just read it. Say the words out loud. There is power in the spoken, in the spoken voice. Um, not only are you saying out loud and declaring it, this is what I'm going to do, you know, declare the words. Um, you're also sending that message out, but you're hearing it. And that is stimulating a different part of your brain than just reading it with your eyes. So you're still getting that, you're vocalizing, you're hearing it. We're starting to program with neurology there. And it's a strategic programming. And guys, this is something that you all have control over. So your assignment today is to write out your big why and dig deep. The deeper you go, the more true you are to yourself, the more meaningful it will be. And it will develop over time. Um, or some of you may know, like I know my moment. I know my why. I mean, I had a reckoning. I had a serious reckoning. Um, and I committed, I committed to that outcome. Um, so thank you guys for bearing with me with that personal story. I didn't mean to get emotional. I definitely did not wake up this morning thinking, I wonder how I can get emotional in front of uh, uh, friends and uh, uh, total strangers. Um, believe me, that was not in my, in my cards this morning, um, but that's what came out. I also want to talk to you about crabs. Let me back up before I go to crabs. Um, when we make these changes, have you ever noticed that when you don't want the cupcake, everyone wants to force feed you that cupcake, right? Um, I know that when I and Rachel committed to quit drinking, um, we were never heavy drinkers. Um, you know, we weren't sloppy drunk, you know, 24 seven. Um, but you know, we'd enjoy a bottle of wine here and there. One of our good friends from the military um, was really struggling um, very severely and um, uh, just, just really struggling. And, um, he had had an incident and um, he had his big reckoning and he committed to not drinking anymore. And he's been sober now for quite a while. And we committed with him um, in solidarity to uh, not drink anymore either. Even though we weren't having the problems he was having, um, why not, why not quit drinking? Um, you know, uh, and I'd even lectured public on the benefits of small amounts of alcohol each day. That's a different uh, story for a different day. Um, so I'm not anti-drinking, just we don't drink. But when we quit drinking, so, so if, you know, we were drinking a glass of wine or sharing a bottle of wine with some friends, or we'd go out and meet some people, you know, for dinner and have a drink or whatever, nobody ever said anything. No one, no one ever, I don't know if that's true, but hardly ever did anyone really want to buy me a drink, right? Um, that didn't come out. But man, the instant that we started vocalizing that we're not drinking anymore, 
um, it was like, people would come up to me like, don't you want a drink? You know, come on, just have one drink with me. They would say things like, I'll, I'll buy you a drink. You're like, I'll buy it. What do you want? Whatever you want. I'll buy it for you. As though the reason I wasn't drinking was because I didn't want like a $3 well drink. Right. Um, and I mean, and that's a good reason too to quit drinking, save some money. Um, but nonetheless, uh, kind of going down that road. I mean, it was so weird and it became almost like watching a movie. Like we could predict what was going to happen where we would announce that and people would just start, Oh, come on. You want a drink here, here. And they would, then they would go buy us a drink and hand us the drink. And well, I, I paid for it. So you got to drink it. And it was the weirdest thing. Right. And I, I'm sure some of you guys have experienced that before. I know that I've experienced with food as well. You know, um, we have a lot of my, my family is a huge Irish Catholic family. Um, and we have some huge Irish Catholic get togethers. And I promise you, there's a lot of drinking involved and there's a lot of food involved and um, not good choices on either end. Right. Um, and uh, I think later on um, in, in our series here, I'll talk about probably next week um, strategies. And I think one of the strategies we'll talk about is um, family events, uh, you know, work events, et cetera. But nonetheless, um, Rachel and I have figured out that, you know, we either we're going to we're going to eat before we go. Um, we're going to order uh, not we're going to order things that aren't quite on the menu and kind of construct our own meals. Or when we go if there is a buffet and we're supposed to like a potluck, we're going to bring something that's on plan for us. And, you know, so we're eating and people will just don't you want to try this? I spent like they'll guilt you into it. I spent all day yesterday preparing this and cooking this today. Don't you want to just try it? You know, come on, you're hurting, you're breaking my heart by not trying it, right? And I'm sure that you've heard these stories uh, before. And guys, that's because human nature is, uh, and there's a saying that we have, right? Misery loves, tell me the word, company, right? I know you guys saw some you guys saying that. Misery loves company, guys. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. If people, if you make the decision, you have this big why and you've committed to it and it's your, it's your new alignment, you're doing it and you're living true to that. And you're being public with it. You're not being, you know, hotty totty and you're not being judgy. You're just being true to yourself, right? Just for yourself, for that purpose, for that rationale that you came up with that motivates you. If people see you doing that and they are still making bad choices, it means that there's either something wrong with you or something wrong with them in their heads, right? And it's a whole lot easier to have it be wrong with you, you know? I promise you that if you want to go out and eat McDonald's and uh, drink, drink, you know, I, I love the, I'll take two Big Macs, um, supersize my fries, you know, a cherry pot pie, and then a Diet Coke. I love that order, uh, right? The Diet Coke is the, is the, um, uh, the cherry on top, right? Um, but nonetheless, um, if you want to eat that way, nobody's, nobody's going to say anything, you know, they'll probably go along with you, but man, if you want to eat a salad with grilled chicken breast and, um, you know, drink some water with some lemon juice in it, um, and et cetera, um, you know, people are going to, you know, again, try to sabotage you. I call these people the saboteurs, right? Um, Rachel calls them, hold on, suppressive persons, um, you know? Um, they want to suppress us or compress us into something less because if, if we, if we've made that choice and we're correct and we're doing it, if this is the case and they're still making bad choices and they know they are and they're not doing it or they feel that they're not capable of doing it, then that translates as you're a winner and they're a loser and nobody wants to be a loser. It's a whole lot easier to keep everybody as a loser. Um, I mean, I'm not saying people are losers, but I think that you guys understand what I'm saying. It's a whole lot easier to have misery around you than to have people that are bright exemplars of what life could be because it makes you question yourself or makes them question themselves, hopefully not you guys. So it becomes tough, not to mention that our entire society is built around basically poor choices of one sort or another. You can even go to like a health food store these days and I would say 90% of the stuff that's in there is just junk food anyway. It's just that it's organic junk food or gluten-free junk food. Uh, right. It's still box can wrap package processed crab um, ultimately. So here's what happens in the world of crabs. If you put a bunch of, of live crabs in a pot, right, a boiling pot, and it's a big pot. And this has been studied a lot. Um, there will always be, I mean, the crabs are, you know, trying to, they're, they're all kind of snapping in this and that. But if there's a crab that starts to climb on top of the other crabs 
and even starts to get out, like maybe gets a hold of the top of that pot, um, it's interesting what happens. The other crabs will pull that crab down. They'll literally pull that crab down. And if that crab continues to try to not fit that crab norm of dying in the pot, they will literally break off the crab's legs. They will start attacking the crab to destroy that crab rather than have that crab get out. And guys, those people that are trying to feed you that food, trying to derail you from your purpose and your alignment, those people that are trying to buy you that drink or basically sabotage your healthy plan, they just don't want you to get out of that pot. Misery loves company. And I want you guys to own that. The problem is not you. That problem and all problems live with the individual. You are not their problem. You are not the problem. That is their issue. And it would be a whole lot better if they would just follow along. And that's why I'm telling you to surround yourself with a tribe of people, invite them to this detox. I know we're in day two, but guys, guess what? You can keep doing this the rest of your life, right? I mean, it's a pretty simple eating plan. Vegetables, fats, proteins, berries, uh, acids, and water. I mean, it's, it's very, very simple. Um, it doesn't take a lot of skills. I'm not a cook. I'm doing it, sharing my stuff. You guys are doing it. I know that you guys know it's simple. Um, but yeah, you got to surround yourself uh, with a tribe, with people that believe in the same goals and have that same alignment ultimately. And hopefully some of those people that are over here will come along with you. Guys, some people won't. That doesn't mean you have to cut them out of your life, right? But sometimes, sometimes that's what happens. Um, you know, uh, sometimes we lose friends along the way um, when we start living in alignment. Sometimes we lose people the closest to us because we've made a different path and a different choice. That doesn't mean it's the wrong path, right? Those people can be lovely, lovely, lovely people. But if they're going to pull you into the boiling pot, guys, they are not constructive to your life. They are destructive to your life. I'm not asking you guys to go out and start making a list of good and bad. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying empower yourself with your own truth and your own alignment and your own purpose and be an exemplar again. And we like to empower the person to impact the community, right? So I want you guys to feel empowered. I want you guys to feel like you are the exemplar. You are hearing this message for a reason. I don't know what that reason is, but it sounds like in my head, what just came to me is you needed to hear it for you and you needed to hear it for some people over here. I don't know who those people are. I don't know who they are. You do. It's, and again, it's not about proselytizing or I don't know if this is a word even jealousizing. I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for, right? We're not trying to convert people into, you know, this is my new religion and I'm going to eat vegetables, right? That's not what we're going to do. Just live to a healthy you with your goal being the best you on this planet that you can be. However that plays out, whatever that means. And hopefully some or all of these people will say, man, uh, I don't know why it's always Jenny and John, right? My, my example, people are always Jenny and John. Um, but you know, Jenny, Jenny's doing it. I want to be like Jenny. Look, she's lost weight. She has more energy. Her skin looks better. Um, you know, she looks happier. Um, man, she she could barely get out of her chair last year, and she climbed a mountain this year. You know, I've ha I've had that person. Um, I want you to be that person. I believe in you. We all, everybody in this group, believes in you, and we believe in each other, and we can do it. This is part of your tribe, but let's create that tribe at home and watch out for the crabs. Watch out for those saboteurs, guys you're in control. So um, I went a little long. Um, I just want to just quickly check this out. Uh, Christy, since you posted to everybody, I'm just going to read it. My life story, more often than not, I always uh, hear how my lifestyle sucks and it's not worth it, um, that we only live once. Uh, why suffer not being able to eat what you want? Yeah, I know. I hear it all the time. Um, my father uh, is a survivor of terminal, like literally zero percent. I think it was like 0.000, I don't know how many 1% chance of survival. Like nobody survives my dad's brain cancer, but he survived. And he survived because he made some serious lifestyle shifts very late in his years, in his 80s. Um, I mean, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but you can. And, you know, my dad is, doesn't eat a whole lot. You know, um, he, follows, he follows Michael Pollan's rules, right? And the ethic rules, uh, which we borrowed. You know, eat real food, mostly plants and not too much. I think that's just good, good advice. 
we've geared that a little bit for you guys with the Epic Five uh, metabolic detoxification diet a little bit, giving a little bit more clarity there. Um, but you know, even my, my siblings, this is my, my siblings, my father's children will tell me as though I'm holding a gun to my dad's head saying you can only eat broccoli, which I don't. Right. Of course. I don't even, he lives two hours from me. Um, they tell me things like, Oh, and they'll actually make like chocolate cakes and bring it over. The guy's diabetic and they'll bring over chocolate cake to him. Um, or they'll bring over X, Y, and Z to him, right? Um, or they'll, I, like, literally, it's like they're going out of their way, and they'll say things like, he's not going to be around that long, so, you know, he should enjoy it. And I'm like, he's not going to be around that long if you keep trying to force feed him crap, you know? I mean, the guy, reason the guy's here is because he's not eating that crap, right? And, and again, this is his own children that love him, and they think that they're doing him a service by bringing him these treats, right? Guys, they're not treats, it's poison. Um, and if we, again, I don't want to get off tangent, but Christy, you nailed it. Um, we only, we do only live once. Let's live as long as we can, as healthy as we can, and as happy as we can and serve this world in the best way that we can, um, while we're blessed to be on this planet at this time with each other. Right. Um, uh, listen guys, we went really long today. Um, last call for, uh, any questions that you guys might have. That was a heavy one today. The big why is a heavy one. Um, and I hope that you guys got some value out of this. And certainly, um, if, this was, if this was meaningful to you, um, I'm going to be posting this on YouTube and then, of course, um, sharing it into uh, the group. Um, please invite people to watch this video. If there's somebody that you know that you think might, this might help, please share it with them. Please do that. Refer them to our YouTube. I don't know how to do that stuff. I think you go to YouTube. I think you go to the Facebook page, click on the video. It takes you to YouTube copy and paste that URL um, and send it to a friend. Invite them to join this group with us. Guys, let's see how many people we can impact in 2020. Um, thank you guys for joining me today. Um, I'll be back tomorrow at noon again. Um, I, I don't remember what we're talking about tomorrow. It might be the smoothie, might be lectins. Um, I don't know what we're talking about tomorrow. It's on my schedule though. And I promise you I'll be here and be ready at noon um, or at least 1202 uh, with enough time for me to get my tea and my water again. Um, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I love you all. And uh, just have a great rest of the day. Um, see you later, guys. Bye-bye.